welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Transnet reported financial results this week against the backdrop of ongoing allegations of corruption and with signs of serious divisions between the new board and some executives. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the company. Hi Terence. Hi The results themselves seemed quite strong, but that didn't tell the full story. The, the results were actually very good. Uh, the volumes are up except for the pipelines business. Uh, so rail and um, container volumes were, were well up. Then we saw the, the net profit was uh, uh, really quite significantly up at 4.8 billion from around 2.8 billion in the previous year. Record EBITDA revenue up. So in the context of a very slow growth South African economy, uh, the, the business actually performed pretty well. But as you say, there's a whole lot of other issues swirling around Transnet. And uh, w part of the issue that, uh, that I don't think was brought out front and centre by the executives that presented was the fact that they uh, had the surge in irregular expenditure. Now, the figure is 8.1 billion, but that wasn't all for 2018 financial year. That was over a five-year time horizon, and it's an accumulative figure. But it is a, a large uptick from the previous year's accounts, where it's around 700 million of irregular expenditure. And that led their auditors to qualify their, their accounts for the 2018 financial year, not on the finances, but on the fact that they couldn't really give a complete picture of what this irregular expenditure was, and more work needs to be done into sort of verifying that. Um, and also, you know, going back five years means that you have to go back through those countries and see where you in breach. And the breaches aren't really with the Companies Act, they're really primarily with around procurement and to do with the uh, Public Finance Management Act. There is a sense that the Minister, the Board and the Executives are not all on the same page. Yes, I mean, uh, this is one of the boards that, uh, well, all the boards at the state-owned uh, companies over the last period, since the Cyril Ramaphosa uh, election to ANC president and subsequently to president of the country, have changed in South Africa. And at the same time, in many of the other companies, you've seen a changing of the guard of some of the executives. That hasn't been the case at Transnet. So you've got a new board, but the same executive team that's been there for the last, few, for the last while. And I think that there is uh, an element of mistrust um, uh, between the new board, led by uh, Papa Malefe, uh, the new minister in the form of Praveen Gordon, and the executive team led by Sia Bonga Gama. And I think it really centers on the role that some of these executives may have, may have played in the what, the what we call the 1064 locomotive procurement uh, contract. That's the procurement of 1,064 locomotives, both diesel and electric, that's been divided uh, between four companies, two Chinese companies, China South Rail, China North Rail, uh, some of uh, China South Rail providing electric, China North Rail diesel, um, Bombardia Transportation providing electric locomotives, and General Electric providing electric locomotives. And there was a feeling that in that split and some of the decision making that the price tag really surged from around 38 billion rand, is the allegation, to 52 billion rand for these locomotives. And there was also space crate for entry by um, a predatory elite uh, and really in the form of consultations and I suppose uh, success fees, especially on the, around the China South Rail contract where a Gupta family linked company is said to be pocketing a lot of money for every uh, locomotive sold which is, uh, is around um, the 50 million rand level, between 5 and 10 million rand might be going to, to success fees. You know, these, these are allegations still, they have to be tested, but these are some of the things that came out in the Gupta leaks, uh, leak papers. And this is the subject, obviously, of the uh, Commission of Inquiry led by uh, Ch Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondo. So a lot has to be explored here. And I think it is a difficult situation for the current executive team and a new board that doesn't quite trust that uh, executive team um, at the moment. And we have seen that letters have been sent out to three of the executives, including Mr. Gama, to give reasons as to why they shouldn't be suspended. The deadline for that was Monday. As we sit recording now, 
there's been no action other than the fact that Mr. Ghana and Mr. Malefe did try and present to Parliament uh, during this week on the results and also on the irregular expenditure aspect. And uh, the parliamentarians said, you know, look, we don't want to listen to you until you've got your house in order and sent them home. So I think, as you can see, uh, it's a bit of an untenable situation. And the results themselves, uh, while I said the financials were fairly good, the operations were fairly good, were there was a credibility gap that emerged uh, between that glowing and in fact, the, the word they used in their press release, sterling set of financial and operational results, and this qualified audit and this huge sort of bucket of uh, irregular expenditure and the suspicion of corruption. What is Transit doing to deal with some of these problems? On the official level, the, uh, other than what I'm talking about between whether there's going to be suspensions um, and new executives put in place, on the official level, th there's this been this a re review of the expenditure and they put the figure out in the public do domain. There's now a process of trying to remedy this, uh, this, this big figure and uh, go through a process similar to what Eskom and other state-owned companies are having to do at the moment. And we saw immediately at the Zondo Commission of Inquiry, this was a bigger issue. You know, these deviation orders, these irregular expenditures, this seemed to be the entry point through which uh, the predatory elite repurposed these state-owned companies in a way that basically allowed uh, a lot large portions uh, of these procurement budgets to flow their direction. So there's a lot of suspicion around this, but officially Transnet is, is, is working on this with their, with their auditors. They also they have, a, they have an official program. They're going to be taking a remedial plan to their board, these executives are taking it. That hasn't yet been approved, but I imagine if these executives are still in place, some sort of remedial plan has to be approved. And at the same time, as they find uh, anything untoward, they claim that they are um, notifying those to the different authorities. Some of those will be the subject of the Commission of Inquiry discussions. Some there were actually charges laid at the police station, and already some charges apparently have been laid. And then we'll have to see you know, if money can be recouped, if they have overpaid for these locomotives or if people can go to jail. But I think we're still at the fairly early stages and I think for South Africans there's a lot of fatigue around this, a lot of frustration. Um, and it's not clear, you know, with this Commission of Inquiry how long this process is going to be before we actually see some accountability, some action. But I, I, I do get the feeling that it's quite difficult at the moment with the lack of trust between the Minister and the Board and the executives and I think something has to give. Thank you. That's the second show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.